We started a small family farm in Buckinghamshire when I was probably nine or ten. My father was pretty inexperienced but very interested. From there I developed an interest in plants which is relatively unusual at school and even then the availability of water for agriculture was a big issue. I think I was interested to understand why plants needed so much water and what really happened when they didn't get it. We're faced with inevitable climate change, massive problems for farmers, warmer weather, wetter weather, drier weather. We're faced with enormous restrictions in resources and the demand for food is growing. For me as a a plant scientist to see a wonderful opportunity to say to the farming producing community, look, we understand the biology behind this and our belief is that if you manipulate these pathways or this aspect of metabolism, either through genetics or through modified crop management, you can produce more with less. Animal science is generally perceived to be all so much more interesting. You throw a stick and a dog runs after it. You throw a stick for a plant and it sits there. But actually plants are very sophisticated. They need to capture carbon and plants trade carbon for water. Somehow we have to impact on the efficiency with which that trade occurs and which a person with an understanding of plant water science could potentially intervene to increase the water productivity of agriculture. One of the other things we do here is to try to understand how variation in genetic background and, and how different varieties cope with water, how is the difference in drought tolerance. Because if we are able to select drought tolerant varieties of a certain crop species, we can help to reduce the water amount we need to irrigate, or also we can grow these crops in really dry environments. We call this more crop by drop. The sensitivity we have a very strong commitment to tell people about our research. We've worked very effectively over 10 years with Waitrose. We initially had a training program with them where we talked to companies that supply them with fresh produce in an attempt to raise people's general understanding of what the issues were. That work has continued, it's grown. We've had joint research funded by Waitrose, which enables colleagues to start working in the agricultural arena and exploiting their research. We run Waitrose Sustainable Agriculture website to publicize more generally interaction between science and business. If you look at the amount of countries that are operating in the scarcity of water situation, the key then is to optimise that. But from a company like Waitrose, what we need to know is that a grower can supply day in, day out, year in, year out, and the investments that they put in are going to come to shape in terms of food production. So it's important not just to have access to water, but to be able to utilise that water effectively. We have had a very talented team of researchers here working over the years, many of whom are fortunate enough to go to the palace and meet the royal family. And we've been encouraged to go out and make a difference. Lancaster University have led the way and simply this ability to actually communicate and disseminate from a leading position has been something we've really valued. Here we have at the University of Lancaster thinking of how plants respond to water stress. I think it's a fantastic project and this could really matter for the world's agriculture. Many of the farmers in China now are seeing that this plant science can actually maintain their yields, yet at the same time they're using less water. That's a pretty major win for the farmer, but it's an even bigger win for the regional governments and local governments who have that as a, as a policy goal. This is the first generation that can decide what sort of planet they want to live on and they want their children, their children's children to live on. And for me, plant science can be absolutely key in that. These are people who are not just here to pass the time. They're here they're because they've absorbed this message and they see the opportunity from this as a set of disciplines. And we've had examples in our own group of people who have gone on to change the world.